Okay, so I wanted to go over the basics of the ball kick. Again, we're not going to get in any, into any depth in regards to creating poses um, in this example. For your assignment, I am going to want you to use reference reel, and I'm going to want you to create um, strong poses using center of gravity, um, base of support, uh, looking at line of action, and a lot of those things that we've discussed. Um, but for this example, we'll just get uh, just the basics of how to get things to function. So first off, let's, uh, let's scale our character down. And so if I select this circle right here, and I go to scale things down, we're going to see th that's not working. So again, we want to select one of these outside uh, uh, circles, and then we can scale this down a bit. And I'm going to move in a little bit. Come in a little closer, and we'll get him somewhere like that. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and at this point uh, just drop in a polysphere and uh, on our translate Y, let's put that to one. So again, I'm in my channel box layer editor to tab all the way to the side there. He still looks a little big, like if that was a soccer ball, that just seems like that would be a bit big. So maybe something like that. So again, just selecting one of those outside spheres and I'm just going to move in something like that. Okay. Okay, so for the character, all I'm going to animate, again, I want you to do some more uh, dynamic uh, poses for your animation. Um, but for functionality, the only thing I'm going to set keyframes on is this uh, ankle control. So I just want to click this little right ankle control. I'm on frame one. Um, I don't want to move it like inside. Um, inside or outside. So I'm going to use this arrow and that arrow, or again, I could use this little plane because uh, this little plane right here will only move along those two axes. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to just grab that little plane, that one right there, and move my leg back something like that. And so I use my move tool. Now I'm using my rotation tool, and I'm just going to rotate the foot back a little bit. And I'm on frame one, so I'm going to click S uh, to set a key. So S, and that looks good. I'm going to come out to about frame 12. And now I'm going to reposition the foot to make initial contact with our, with our ball. Okay. Something like that looks pretty good. So I'm going to set a keyframe. And then I'll come out to about 20. And then pull my leg somewhere like that. Now you might have noticed that our leg uh, uh, just broke, so to speak. As we scale back and forth, right? It looks like our character just kicked a, a ball that is cemented to the ground and had a horrific leg injury. So we don't want that to happen. Uh, the reason why is we have these pull vector um, controls that our knee is trying to face at. And so if this knee is trying to look at this little um, constraint, the second my leg gets past it, my knee is going to try to flip and, and orient to face, uh, face that. Um, so what we need to do is um, we'll just go ahead and move both of these. So I'm going to drag a box around both of those. I'm going to use my move tool. And I'm just going to pull those way out front. Okay. Now if I scrub through, I can see that my leg just moves right through without having a funky um, inverse leg break kind of flip. Okay, cool. Click back on my controller to see my keyframes. And I think that looks good. Okay, so we have our ball. The one thing we haven't done yet is we haven't dropped in like a wall. So I'm just going to drop in a cube and I'm just going to scale that up and pull that up scale this up and position that in place okay so I want my character to kick the ball and the ball to hit the wall and kind of bounce around okay so what we want to use is bullet so we want to come here and change our modeling menu to FX okay and I want to click on the ball and I want to go to bullet 
and I want to go to active rigid body okay and I'm gonna go to the attribute editor tab on the, all the way to the right um, I want this collider shape to be a sphere right so that that matches that I'm gonna rewind so that I can see that okay cool um, I'm gonna come out to about frame 12 and that's where we want uh, this to interact okay but if I go back and play right the ball is gonna fall through the floor so uh, we'll come back in here in a second but I want to go to the bullet solver um, for a minute over here in our outliner and in the bullet solver shape one tab I want to turn on uh, ground plane so now if I play it'll just sit there on the ground all right cool so now um, before we actually add some impact to the ball, I want to make this a passive uh, rigid body. Uh, again, passive means uh, that this won't interact with gravity or other fields, whereas um, our active rigid bodies will. Um, but let's go ahead and click this. You know, let's go to bullets and down to passive rigid body. Let's go ahead and click the, uh, the box this time. And we can see that the box collider shape is going to work perfect. So I'm just going to click apply and close. And we have a passive rigid body now on our wall. Okay, so let's click back on our sphere and let's come to about frame 12. That's about when that had uh, contact. And I want to come over here to my attribute editor and I want to click on the bullet rigid body shape one tab. And what I want to do is I want to come down here and look uh, for this area that says um, forces and impulses. And I want to open that up. Okay, down here in the very bottom right hand corner, I can see um, our axes, right? Our Y is pointing up, our Z is pointing this way, and our X is pointing off in the distance. And I can see that down, right down here, that's kind of giving me an indication. So if I come here kind of to the side view, I can see that Z is pointing along this. Uh, again, our vector, if we look at our impulse, starts with X and then Y and then Z. So as he kicks this ball, I know I want it to go up, and I know I want it to go over on Z. So um, at this point, though, I don't want it to move, um, and I don't want it to move any of these frames before. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to Impulse Y. I'm going to right-click on that box. I'm going to set key. And then I'm going to come to Impulse Z. I'm going to right-click on that and set key. And now I have a keyframe right there for those two fields. And so now I'm gonna pull this forward to frame 13. And now I'm gonna set this to something like 10 because I do want it to kind of go up in the air. Uh, so I hit 10 and then enter, and then I'm gonna right click and set key. And then I'm gonna come to Z and let's go with something maybe like 40 and, and then right click and set key. Okay, so we have keyframes for 10 and 40. And already we can see that it's moved. Now I don't want this impulse to continue, right? I just want one initial impact from the foot. So I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna turn that back to zero. Right click and set key. And then 40, zero. Right click and set key. So now, if I rewind and click play, I'm gonna see that we get a ball kick that is now hitting that wall. I, uh, 33 frames isn't enough, so I'm going to extend that to 100 just so I can get a better sense of what's going on. And now we can see that we get a kick. And we'd probably want to animate his leg coming back down, but again, this video is more about functionality. And I'm going to want you guys to also pay a little more attention uh, to the poses. Uh, so giving me um, some good pose to pose uh, animation. Okay, well at this point I think this will give you what you need uh, to get the functionality uh, for the ball kick uh, assignment uh, down. Um, so that's basically what you need to do. Create uh, an animation for our character and then um, set some, create the ball, uh, set it to active rigid body, create a wall, set it to passive rigid body on the bullet solver, turn on the ground plane, and then for this we just want to set uh, keyframes before the impact to be zero on Y and zero on whatever direction we're going. And then on the, the actual impact, we want to set some numbers and then the frame right after 
we want to zero those out and then key those again. Okay. Well, anyways, I hope this has been helpful.